the United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came up with a border security bill which I supported. And that bill would have put 1,500 more border agents on the border. Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you I would say we would both leave this debate right now. I'd like to see her go down to Washington, D.C. during this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. Go down to, because she's been so bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border, because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The President of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right. and you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. That was former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris sparring over the border crisis during the ABC News presidential debate last night. Joining me now, Louisiana Congressman and Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Speaker, good morning to you and, and first your reaction to the debate last night. Well, I tell you what, President Donald Trump is the reigning presidential debate champion. And even though the contest was three to one last night, he clearly prevailed. I looked at seven or eight polls this morning, viewer polls. I mean, Newsmax had him win in 93 to six. C-SPAN had him 65-35 as the victor. The Daily Caller says it was 73 to nine something like 73 to 8. They gave 19 points to the moderators because they were so lopsided for the other side, fact-checking only Trump and allowing her to skate through that. This is what stuck out to me, Cheryl. Kamala Harris has not done any, any real debates, obviously. She hasn't done any interviews since she was coronated as the queen here. And she had 50 days to memorize her lines. So she went out last night and delivered the lines as if she was an actor in a play. But that's the thing. It's an act. It was phony. She lied about her record. She lied about President Trump's record. And she got away with it. The thing that people appreciate so much about President Trump is his authenticity. He's real. It comes from the heart. He did expose so many of her policy failures. But he needed five hours to unfurl them. That's the problem. She's trying to pretend that she's somebody totally different than we know that she is and her entire record shows. And um, it's a farce. They're, they're running a campaign on a fantasy instead of facts. But I'm telling you what, the people are going to vote on record over rhetoric, and we're going to win this election. Well, and there was certainly a lot of questions about the economy that were not answered uh, last night. But the border was front and center, and that is something that you are focused on. Let's get to the business of the day, Speaker. The House is set to hold a final yeah. vote today on your plan to tie the SAVE Act to a continuing resolution fund the government for six more months, avoid a partial government shutdown. Two House GOP lawmakers voted against that procedural hurdle yesterday uh, to advance the bill. You've got this slim four-seat majority right now. Republicans likely need the help of Democrats to get this passed today. I want to ask you about that. If it does pass, it would help secure the upcoming election by preventing non-citizens from voting. But here's what Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had to say about it yesterday to you. Watch. The House should stop wasting time on a partisan CR that's going nowhere and work in a bipartisan way to get this done. We're ready to sit down with them and discuss a bipartisan bill. But Speaker Johnson has not reached out to speak to Leader, McKen Leader Jeffries, Leader Schu myself, or the White House. You know, Speaker, we had Congressman Austin Scott in the last hour, and he said that, that basically he's concerned that Republicans will lose the House if there is a government shutdown. You had President Trump writing on Truth Social uh, that said basically if Republicans don't get absolute assurances on election security, they should in no way, shape, or form go forward with the CR. He's calling for a government shutdown. I want to get your thoughts on that because... Is there long-term political consequences to you, to the party, if we were to head to a full government shutdown in an election year? Uh, look, I don't believe it's going to come to that. President Trump and I are on the same page, as is every Republican here. We have to ensure election security. I've been traveling the country nonstop, Cheryl, for the last eight months. I've done campaign events in 198 cities across 39 states. It does not matter where I am, blue state, swing district, it doesn't matter. The first or second question in every single audience, from every single question, 
is about election security. People are deeply concerned about this because of all the madness that happened in 2020 and what they've seen uh, roll out on the news. And now we know, we know for a fact, non-citizens are registered to vote in so many states around the country. We have to solve this problem. The last train leaving the station is the CR, the continued resolution, government funding. Why? Because Chuck Schumer in the Senate has not done a single appropriations bill. They have completely failed in their duty, so there's nothing on the table for us to negotiate. So we have to do a resolution to keep the government going. We attach the SAVE Act to it because the SAVE Act simply says that states have to have proof of citizenship from someone before they sign up to participate in the election. This is a serious problem. We have races in Congress, in the House, that are decided by tiny margins. I have a colleague here that won her first race in 2020 by six votes. We have colleagues, many, that have won their races by just a couple hundred votes. We have about 16 million illegals who have come across that border since border czar Harris opened it up with Joe Biden. If just a small percentage of them participate in this election, they can throw House races, they can upset the majority here, they might even determine the outcome of the presidential. This is real, serious, present danger, and we have an obligation to do everything we possibly can to secure that election. We owe it to the American people. Two quick things here that you mentioned. So first off, I'm curious, if, if the SAVE Act, if, the, if this were to pass, if the Senate were to pass it, which Schumer says they won't, but if they did, could you even put these rules in place before November? That's question number one. Question number two is, do you have a fallback plan uh, if, indeed, the Senate does block this? Uh, well, look, Chuck Schumer needs to be serious and honest with the American people. Um, I'd love to sit down with Chuck Schumer. We should debate the SAVE Act. In fact, I'd love to have him on a national debate to do that. But he won't because they have no way to explain why they would want to allow illegals to participate in the election. But that's what the open border has been about the entire time. We know that this is going on and we have to stop it. We're not talking about contingency plans. We're in this to win it. We're in it to deliver for the American people. The American people demand and deserve that we have a fair election. They're, they're arguing right now, they're, they're arguing that it's already illegal, but we have lots of things that are on the books. It's about enforcement of the law, and that's what we're trying to push here. We're going to do that today and every day until we get it done. But just real quick, so, but can any provisions in the SAVE Act be implemented before November? We're less than two months from the election. Yeah, one of the provisions is that every secretary of state needs to audit their voter rolls before they have election day on November 5th. Some of the states are early voting. We need to do this. We passed it weeks ago. The Senate has been sitting on it. we got to force it. Okay, okay. Before you go, Speaker Johnson, and thank you for your time, today does mark 23 years since the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks. We are remembering all of those friends, colleagues, uh, the people that we lost here in New York City, uh, in Northern Virginia, at the Pentagon, in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Uh, Speaker Johnson, I wanted to get your thoughts on the, the momentum of, the, excuse me, the uh, memories of today uh, and obviously those that we are honoring that we have lost. Always a tough day. We'll be doing a leaf rain leaf wreath laying ceremony, sorry, in the rotunda here this morning, as we do every year. 9-11 uh, left a big scar on our country, but it also made us more resilient. It changed the way we live. It reminded us that we do indeed live in the greatest nation in the history of the world, and the people who were brave enough to defend it deserve our great thanks and our honor every single day. We did that here in the rotunda yesterday with the Afghanistan families, the 13 service members who were lost at Abbey Gate. They were owed that honor, and it was overdue, and, and we told them that as was frankly true, the administration failed those families. Yeah. But we're not going to do that comments, again. Your God comments bless were very, them and all those who serve. Your, your comments were very powerful yesterday, Speaker Johnson, uh, as well. Uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, thank you for being here this morning. We appreciate it.